Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We're talking about, yes, we've made it to the year 1974, and this is Relayer. Absolutely phenomenal album. This is, uh, it, I, it, it could be my favorite Yes album, I think, and that's really unusual because I, I'm a huge Bill Bruford fan. Obviously, I like Alan White yeah, as well, um, but... Yeah, there's just there's something phenomenal about this. Um, obviously, right off the bat, worth noting, um, Rick Wakeman had left the band. He was unhappy with um, the madness of Tales from Topographic Oceans, and he was replaced by a guy named Patrick Moraz, who um, phenomenal keyboard player um, and and very much a part of the jazz scene. You know, he had he had uh, the jazzy mentality. Um, and I think I think that probably impressed the guys in Yes uh, quite a bit. I mean, it is two different, you know, the, the jazz thing and the rock thing are, are definitely two different, um, you know, two different things. And uh, you know, it's not that one's better than the other, but you know, when when you cross over like that, you you know, the jazz guys are going to bring something to the rock guys the same way the rock guys would bring something to the jazz guys. So I, I think I think uh, the band was quite taken with Mraz, and I mean he, he is an exceptionally talented keyboard player. I think I personally like him a little more than Rick Wakeman because I like the jazz thing. I mean Wakeman is uh, he's more into uh, you know he's a classical guy who likes rock music, whereas Mraz is jazz who likes rock music and fusion music and stuff like that. And uh, his influence on this album, this is the only album by Yes he played on, but his influence on it is is massive. Uh, this is really the closest they ever came to doing fusion kind of stuff and um, you know it's, it's some of the best performances by all the members of the band I mean, Chris Squire is absolutely on fire um, you know John Anderson has some really highlight moments Steve Howe has some phenomenal moments um, and again this is this is a I, I mentioned with uh, topographic oceans I don't think it's a very good introduction to Alan White's um, contribution to yes this is a much better example of it Alan White is just on fire uh, he also been with the band a couple of years at this point so I mean he'd, he'd been you know, well established, and I think the band got used to playing with them. Um, so yeah, you know, it is it is wonderful. It's also got one of the, I, another one of the best album covers ever. Is this, this could be my favorite Yes album cover? I think I said that about Topographic Oceans, but oh, it's so majestic and mystical, and it's so '70s prog. Fantastic stuff. Then we get the uh, the big scary snake at the back. Um, yeah. So the structure of the album. Um, is you can compare the structure of it to Close to the Edge. Uh, we get you know the, the first the first song first side is one big epic song, and then we get the two ten minute pieces, uh, which is good because you know after you know four four of four epics in a row, it's it's pretty tiring to get through it, but uh, to get to get through all of them. Um, so it, it's good that they 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 went back to writing slightly shorter songs. Um, but yeah, even though it has this a similar structure as Close to the Edge, it's really nothing like Close to the Edge. Like I said, you get there's that fusion influence here, and um, you know it really feels like a like from a different like a, of a different time, and it is. Uh, it's got a very '70s feel too. I think that that's just the sound of uh, Mraz's keyboards. There's some there's some great bits that are just '70s-y. I like that. Um, yeah, well let's let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the tracks. Uh, side one opens with the gates of delirium, uh, and I, I I'll say it right now. I think this is my favorite epic that Yes ever did. I mean, obviously Yes did a lot of epics. Um, you know, so far we've got Close to the Edge, the four songs from Topographic Oceans, and then this is the fifth the fifth time they did the, the whole side long thing, and it is it is phenomenal. And um, you know, it's not obvious. I really like the the song Close to the Edge. I think that's better than anything on Topographic Oceans. Um, but again, you can't really compare Gates of Delirium to Close to the Edge. It's a totally different thing. Close to the Edge has a lot of repeating themes, um, you know, and it, it, it's got, you know, its sections, and it kind of takes you on a journey, and you know, it brings you back full circle. Um, Gates of Delirium is, is, you know, basically, you know, a, a symphony in three movements. Um, they, you know, it, it, there's, there's a lot less repeating themes, but at the same time, it is coherent. It's not... Uh, you know, it's not like some of the stuff on Topographic Oceans that just keeps going and going, and they just add a part for the sake of making the song longer. Um, you know, everything that's on Gates of Delirium is there for a reason, and uh, it, it, it's a phenomenal track. It's 21 minutes long. It doesn't feel like that, you know, and you know, it's really engaging. Uh, obviously, there's some great keyboard work throughout the whole thing. Um, 
and John Anderson gives a great performance. The whole band delivers a great performance. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it's probably my favorite epic that uh, Yes ever did. Sidelong epic. Um, the intro is really cool. We get, uh, you get the the uh, Mraz is doing his doubles there on the on the ride symbol, and it's some just kind of like little themes pop up. You know, Steve Howe is throwing his little harmonic uh, melodies, and it it's a it's a nice build. We get kind of acoustic an acoustic verse to to open it, and then it just gradually keeps building. I love the the main theme of that first section. That dun 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 That's a that's a highlight yes moment of the the whole catalog for me. And then there's some variations on the bass uh, on the rhythm underneath. Boom 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 boom. There's all kinds of variations on it. And there's a lot of weird time signatures. It's, just, it's a very complex piece. Not at all not at all easy to play. What's the, on any in any regard? Um, utterly fantastic. Um, and it winds its way. It, it you know there's a few verses and you know we we get those themes, a few variations of those themes, and then it winds its way into the battle sequence, which is all instrumental and it's it's got some of the best playing, the whole by you know by the by the whole band ever. Um, you know again we we hear that fusion influence that Mraz is bringing too, like that that bass line uh, that that pops up. Boom. That's just ace. That is a phenomenal phenomenal part. Um, and then the timing signature, da 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 Lots of, lots of crazy changes and whatnot. We get some weird effects, yeah, they're just throwing stuff around in the studio to get crashing sequence, yeah, crashing sound for the sequence. Uh, and it, it does a fantastic, a phenomenal job of representing a battle scene, the chaos of war and that. Um, that's fantastic. The, the song, I should have said, is it's kind of based on war and peace, um, so it's proggy topic, certainly. <laughs> um, but then after the after the crazy battle sequence, we get this this big march that pops up, and it, it that, that's one of my favorite Mraz contributions actually. I love um, I, I love the, the tone of his synth when it goes into the victory sequence after the battle, and it goes into that march for you know a little bit, and then Howe takes over on the guitar, and uh, this all winds its way up to uh, what's possibly the most famous part of the album, it winds up to Soon, uh, which was edited from the end of uh, Gates of Delirium and was released as a single. Um, and it's okay as a single, but it doesn't have the same impact. Uh, I think Soon is best heard as the third movement of Gates of Delirium. Um, because you have to go through, you know, the chaos of the battle and, you know, the... the the stateliness of the themes at the beginning. You have to go through all of that stuff to, to for soon to really to really uh, get you. And um, you know, I, I've I, I've probably spoken critically of John Anderson a little bit, but uh, you know, it's all forgiven. Whenever I hear, whenever I, I hear soon, that's an absolute highlight. Um, it's, it really is. A, it's a very powerful, beautiful tune. And like I said, as a kind of coda to the you know the rest of the epic, I think it, it works beautifully. Um, and it just winds its way out, and then that's the end. Uh, the end of the first side. Absolutely essential. Phenomenal, phenomenal track. Gates of Delirium. Uh, and then we flip the album over, and oh, what do we get? What do we get? Sound Chaser. This is the fusion bit. This is where they go right into full jazz fusion kind of mode. Uh, but probably the hardest rocking jazz fusion you're ever gonna hear. I mean, it is. It is very high energy, and it really does rock. Um, you know, it, and that goes for Gates of Delirium too. Like that, this is what gives this album a big advantage over Tales from Topographic Oceans. Is it does rock? It's got some real high energy, you know, boom. You know, it's got some balls to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sound Chaser is. Uh, I get th I, th It's a contender for my favorite song by Yes. Period. Actually, which is unusual because. Sound Chaser is very not yes. It has a lot of those classic yes trademarks. You know, we get uh, there's a great dynamic bit in the middle where it quiets right, quietens right down, and uh, Steve Howe throws in some classically in, uh, inspired lines that are really really nice. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's got those yes moments, but the main bit that's very not yes. Um, but it, it's phenomenal. And I mean, right there, I mean, Gates of Delirium is one of my favorite Yes songs. S um, Sound Chaser is one of my favorite Yes songs. That's 
yeah, that's three quarters of this whole album, so it's kind of hard for me to say it's not my favorite. I, it's it's so good. Um, but yeah, some of the, the the playing on Sound Chaser is just out of this world, uh, particularly by Alan White. You know, he's he's got those really fast tom bits and. And yeah, you, on first glance, it sounds like just kind of one of those thrasher drum solos where you just hit everything as fast as you can. But it is very controlled, and it it comes into the, you know, it leads into that that main rhythm that, uh, you know, just just jumps out of the speakers at you. I love it. Um, and there's there's some of the one of the some of the best playing ever by Steve Howe on Yes record. Is, uh, is is in that middle section too. He's got this really kind of raunchy, uh, I don't know about raunchy, but raw sounding um, and heavy uh, guitar solo by himself, and then it winds its way into the kind of classical thing uh, and brings itself back to the chaos. The other highlight is the John Anderson cha 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 cha. That's wicked, and it just, it just it's the chaos of it and the adventure of it, and you know you just you don't know what's coming. It did. And if you don't listen to it for a while, it always surprises you when it, when that part comes up. And then towards the end, we get some mad tempo changes where we get that main theme and the, the tempo is going all over the place. And it, it's, it's, again, it's so adventurous. Um, phenomenal track. Um, and then it winds up with To Be Over, which is uh, it's probably it's my least favorite song on the album, but it, it does grow on me. The more, the more I listen to the album, the more I, I appreciate it to be over. Um, I used to find it really sleepy, and it, it is because it is so much slower than what we have for, for the rest of the album. It, you know, Gates of Delirium is crazy and big, with the exception of Soon. Um, and Sound Chaser is just completely out of this world in its craziness. Um, so To Be Over is, is, is a nice contrast to the rest of the album. And, uh, you know, it's probably in, in the same the same vein as, uh, you know, And You and I, which I really, really like. Less, ac less acoustic, probably, you know, there's acoustic bits to it, but it's predominantly uh, those synthy lines. Um, but yeah, it, it is, it is a, a lovely example of, um, of that style writing by Yes. Uh, but I don't, again, I don't really have much to say about it other than, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to like it less and I like it more now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess it's soft, it's, it's lovely. So there it is, Relayer. Um, said probably you know it is my favorite it is my favorite album you know two of the songs on here are my favorite songs by yes I, I i'll say it right there that's it even possibly even more than close to the edge it's so hard picking favorites i don't know why i do it i don't believe in it but for the sake of viewing entertainment i suppose i should uh i should throw those out there or maybe i shouldn't let me know send me a comment um yeah, so uh, there we go. Next album, um, the return of Rick Wakeman. We're going to be talking about going for the one. So stay tuned for that. Uh, hit me a subscribe, send me a like, send me a comment, and uh, we will see you all in the future. Thank you very much.